Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider on third reading resolution of both houses number seven and hereby direct the Secretary General to read the title of the measure and after call the roll for nominal voting. Secretary General. Resolution of both houses number seven. A resolution of both houses of Congress proposing amendments to certain economic provisions of the 1987 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines, particularly on Articles 12, 14, and 16. Roll call of members in consideration on third reading of, how, of resolution of both houses number seven. Abalos. Abante. Abunda. Acharon. Asidre. Ako, Adyong, Advincula, Agarao, Alba, Albano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Ang, Angara, Aquino, Aquino Magsaysay, Arbizon, Arenas, Arogancia, Asistio, Ataide, Omentado, Balindong, Barba, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Bascug, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Benitez, Bernos, Billiones, Biron, Bolivia, Bondo, Bongalon, Bordado. Mr. Speaker. Honorable Bordado. My vote is no, and again, kindly allow me to explain my vote later. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Duly noted, Honorable Bernard. Secretary General. Bosita, Briones, Brosas. Mr. Speaker, my vote is no, and I would like to explain my vote later. Duly noted, Honorable Brosas. Secretary General. Buhain, Bulutbegtang, Bustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cahayunuy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castro, France. Mr. Speaker, my vote is no, and I will explain my vote later. Noted, uh, Honorable uh, Castro, Secretary General. Castro, Jane, Celeste, Chan, Chato, Chua, Shungalao, Co. Angelica Natasha, Co. Elizaldi, Co. Pilar, Co. Juanco Jaime Eduardo Mart, Co. Juanco Mart. Colada, Coliantes, Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Cua, Quaresma, Dagoo, Dalipe, Dalo, Dayang Hirang, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, Defensor, Del Mar, De Los Santos, Dimaporo Mohamed Khalid, Dimaporo City Amina, Dionisio, Domingo, Duavit, Duhali, Duterte, D. Faustino Ino, D. Faustino Michael Carlos, D. Ian Paul, Ecleo, Emano, Enverga, Escudero, Espares, Espina, Estrella, Yudela, Farinas, Fernandez, Ferrer Antonio, Ferrer Juliet Marie, Flores, Fortes, Frasco, Fresnedi, Fuentebella, Galeos, Garcia Albert, Garcia Dante, Garcia Jose Arturo, Garcia Maria Angela, Garcia Pablo John, Garcia Vincent, Guardiola, Garin, Gasataya, Gato, Go Ed Christopher, Go Mark, Goles, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzales Aurelio, Gonzales Neptali, Gonzales Sandro, Goriseta, Kiko, Gintu, Gulias, Gutierrez, Jaresco, Hataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Horibata, Javier, Co Olga, Co Ricardo, Co Wilton, Conjun, Labad Labad, Lakson, Lakson Noel, Lagman. La Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, Congressman. Honorable my vote is no. Lagman. And I will explain my vote at the proper time. Duly noted, uh, um, Honorable Lagman. Secretary General, please proceed. Lagon Daphne, Lagon Sunny, Lara, Lasatin, Lee, Legarda, Libanan, Limkai Chong, Loyola, Luistro, Lumayag, Makapagal Arroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan, Mangawang, Manikis, Manuel. Mr. Speaker. Yes, um, Honorable Raul. 
I vote no to RBH7. I have seven reasons. I would like to explain them later. Thank you. Lamagid, uh, Honorable Raul Manuel. Please proceed, Secretary General. Marano, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariano Hernandez, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado Rivilla, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Nava, Nisay, Nograles Juan Fidel Felipe, Nograles Margarita, Nolasco, Waminal, Olaso, Olivares, Ongchuan, Ordanes, Ortega, Oano Dizon, Padiernos, Paduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancho, Panotes, Pascual. Mr. And Speaker, my vote is yes and I would like to make a brief explanation later why I'm in favor of constitutional amendments. Thank you. Duly noted. Secretary General, please continue. Pimentel, Plaza, Pleito, Primicia Sagabas, Pomaren, Puno, Kimbo, Rama, Rehensha, Remulia, Revilla Bryan, Revilla Ramon Jolo, Reyes, Rilio, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez Yulohio, Rodriguez Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romaldes Ferdinand Martin, Romaldes Sieda Marie, Romualdo, Romulo, Roque, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sakaluran, Salceda, Sali, Salimbangon, Salo, Santos, Saulug, Silverio, Singson Richel, Singson Ronald, Singson Mihan, Solon, Suan, Suansing Horacio, Suansing Mikael Angela, Suarez, Taliado, Tamayo, Tambunting, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith Micah, Tan Reynolds Michael, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tan Tambut, Tan Chai, Tan Watko, Tariela, Teodoro, Teves, Tianco, Tieng, Tolentino, Tulfo Irwin, Tulfo Jocelyn, Tulfo Ralph Wendell, Tupas, Tutor, T, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Uy, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velasco, Veloso Tuazon, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Villafuerte Luis Raymond, Villafuerte Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Violago, Yam Suan, Yap Christian Tell, Yap Christopherson, Yap Edvic, Yap Eric, U Divina Grace, U Jazel Victoria, Yulo, Zamora Amparo Maria, Zamora Maria Carmen, Zamora Isabel Maria, Zubiri. Second call of members in consideration on third reading of resolution of both houses number seven. Advincola. Alvarez Pantaleon. Amatong. Bautista Lim. Garcia Vincent. Gonzaga. Marcoleta. Ungab. Valmayor. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Honorable Barbers, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I know how my vote was registered? Majority Leader. Mrs. May we direct the Secretary General to... Honorable Barbers, it's affirmative. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I now explain my vote? Uh, if you may, um, Honorable Barbers, we may have to announce the vote and then we will uh, proceed to recognize you. Thank you. With 289 affirmative votes, seven negative votes, and two abstentions, resolution on both houses number seven is hereby approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Barbers for his explanation. Honorable Barbers, please proceed, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, this representation votes yes to resolution of both houses number seven. 
I vote yes because I believe that the proposed amendments to certain economic provisions are necessary to effect changes in the way we follow, we allow foreign investments in our country. No constitution is cast in stone. We, have, we even have a provision prohibiting amendments only for the first five years. This is a testament to the fact that depending upon the circumstances, amendments may be introduced to make our charter attuned to the needs of the times. It's been 37 years, Mr. Speaker. I do not see anything wrong if we allow foreign capital to manage some of our public utilities. If they have the technology and the knowledge, by all means, we should welcome them. They will provide employment to our people who can then provide food on the family table. If foreign, highly regarded and revered, revered educational institutions can set up shop here, it will be of great honor. Our schools will not close shops just because of the competition. On the contrary, they will, they will be encouraged to improve their quality of instructions to the best interest and benefit of our students. After all, what, we have, what have we got to lose? We are now consistently falling and lagging behind our neighbors in academic performance. The academic brain drain might slow down if our better teachers can be hired here and need not seek teaching jobs abroad. All these intentions are not to the detriment of the people, but rather for the improvement of their lives. That is pretty obvious, Mr. Speaker. To insinuate otherwise is sheer paranoia. I vote yes because I know that we are not violating any law or even the Constitution as we go through this whole process. Article 17, Section 1, Paragraph 1, in its plain language and simple text states, any amendment to or revision of this Constitution may be proposed by the Congress upon a vote of three-fourths of all its members. The plain and simple meaning is not hard to understand, and there is no need for any other interpretation since there is no ambiguity. Congress may propose amendments at any time, but it needs a three-fourths vote of all its members. Absent any qualification on the manner of how a bicameral Congress may vote, the process that we took cannot be said to be violative of this provision. It is really that simple that even non-lawyers will fully understand. Should the proposed amendments hurdle the required votes in Congress, the real litmus test will be in the plebiscite. Congress may only propose amendments. It is the people who would decide whether to accept them by ratification or reject them in a plebiscite called for the purpose. That is what this Constitution mandates and imposes. No more, no less. Once ratified, they become a permanent part of the Constitution until amended. Thus, whatever is meant and embodied therein reflects the true will of the people that not even the courts can reverse. Should the amendments eventually empower Congress to effect changes in policies and principles by passing and or amending laws, it is the will of the sovereign that it be so and that cannot be unconstitutional. This, in a nutshell, Mr. Speaker, is the entire essence of this exercise that we are undergoing. If it were up to me, though, I would not stop at these proposed amendments. To me, the economic problems are more the results of certain political provisions. For instance, we now have elections practically every year without counting the possible plebiscite. We had the following national presidential elections last 2022, the Barangay SK elections last October 2023, then the midterm elections next year in 2025, and a few months after, another Barangay and SK elections. Then if things go as usual, national presidential and Barangay SK elections every three years thereafter. How many billions of our precious resources are spent in every election? Yet we claim that our economy has fallen in the gutters and we are at the bottom of the pit. Can a country such as ours, with thousands of politicians, 
down to the smallest units of government, the barangay of more than 42,000 nationwide and counting, ever make use of its scarce resources in the wisest manner? Or will the huge bureaucracy continue to eat up the bulk of the budget to give salaries to its civil servants? Instead of being able to use these resources, Mr. Speaker, on much-needed infrastructure, transportation, and communication projects, the things that investors have been pointing out as severely lacking in our country. We are forced to sustain thousands of local politicians and millions of people in the government sector. This is the sad reality which our country can never afford to sustain perpetually, yet advocates of, quote, this is not the time to amend the Constitution. Want our people to believe that our government can afford to sustain this from here to eternity. They couldn't care less if our external debt continues to soar, yet they criticize every administration of being the cause and that these debts fuel massive corruption. What an unfortunate, ironic, and hypocritical outlook, Mr. Speaker. If we are able to channel these resources to projects, people will find work. If these projects bear fruit in the form of investments, people will have work. Perhaps even our OFWs will be able to find local employment. If we are able to use these scarce resources to slowly pay off our debts, our children's children may never have to pay enormous taxes on almost everything we consume and all endeavors we enter into. The sooner we realize this, the sooner we can resolve the matter. Another political provision that needs amendment concerns the lack of qualifications for people who seek elective positions. Besides being able to read and write, no other substantial educational and or professional qualifications nor the much needed work experience is required under the present constitution. Mas dini disqualify pa ang walang pera na kandidato at sinasabing nuisance dahil hindi daw makakamount ng isang credible campaign for lack of funds kesa i-disqualify for lack of educational or work experience. Honorable Barbers, with much respect, please conclude, sir. I will wrap it up, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for an applicant janitor in government service to be considered, he or she must present at least a high school diploma or its equivalent. Yet, we sometimes look lowly at them. But for anyone seeking a government position, educational attainment is not required. With this predicament, how can we never improve? How can we ever improve our country's economic status in the global stage? Can we also examine the multiple political party system under the present charter that allows the proliferation of all kinds of political parties that gives way to the prevalence of and nurtures political butterflies? These are but some of the political provisions that, to my humble mind, truly affect the economic status of our country. Until we open our eyes and accept that these flawed constitution, constitutional provisions need immediate amendments, we should not complain about our social, economic, and political stagnation. We are, we are called leaders for a reason. People put us here because we promised them a better life and a better future. Let us put our money where our mouth is. Mr. Speaker, I remain hopeful that RBH7 could be the spark to trigger genuine reforms in government and governance and instill and bring back values to us politicians mm -hmm. and the electorate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Salamat, Congressman Barbers. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, before we proceed, may we remind all our members uh, to wish to explain their vote that you have a three-minute time limit. Uh, three with minutes. that said, Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Bordado for his explanation. Honorable Bordado, you're recognized. You have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, laws can be amended by the usual process of legislation. Local ordinances likewise go through the same process. Memorandum circulars are superseded by the issuance and publications of new ones. Amending the Constitution, however, is a different ball game altogether. Unlike ordinary statutes, the Constitution can only be amended through people's initiative 
a constituent assembly, or a constitutional convention. The process is long, arduous, and expensive. In short, the framers of the Constitution made certain that the Charter cannot be changed that easily. Mr. Speaker, the Constitution has purposely made the process of amendment or revision to be so for two reasons. First, like the virtue of stability in the context of the rule of law, constitutional stability is essential in any civilized society. And second, to ensure that any change in the fundamental law is not arbitrary, but for a real, valid, and exigent cause. Mr. Speaker, the objectives for the proposed amendments are, to quote, liberalize industries, promote efficient service delivery, and foster competition. Second, to ensure that Filipino children receive the best training so as to become globally competitive. And third, to attract foreign direct investment in the advertising industry. Mr. Speaker, these ends can be met without the proposed amendments. Proper implementation of the existing mechanisms is the key. Imagine the time, the effort, and the resources that will be taken away to resolve more pressing matters such as poverty alleviation, educational budget cuts, and agrarian reform, to name a few. These are the real, valid, and exigent issues that require genuine governmental attention and action. And to think, Mr. Speaker, that our total national debt will soon breach the 15 trillion peso mark. I therefore vote no to RBH number seven. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat, uh, Honorable Bordado. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Arlene Rosas. Honorable Rosas, you have the floor, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This representation firmly opposes the full liberalization or allowing 100% foreign ownership in public utilities, educational institutions, and advertising. Pagtitibayin at sesementohan lamang nito ang mga patakarang neoliberal at tatanggalin ang mga restriction para ganap na makapag-ari at lalong makapandambong ang mga dayuhan sa ating lupain at, ek at ekonomiya ng ating bansa. Sa ating mahabang karanasan sa foreign direct investments, puro matatamis ngunit napapakong pangako ang dala nito. Mahal pa rin ang bilihin, serbisyo at utilities gaya ng kuryente at tubig. Lubusang lumiit kung hindi man tuluyang bumagsak ang agricultural and manufacturing sectors. Nananatiling pinakamahirap ang mga magsasaka, mangingisda, habang binabarat pa rin ang sahod ng mga manggagawa. Hindi sasagutin ng pagpasok ng mga dayuhan ang matagal ng problema ng nananatiling komersyalisado at kolonyal na edukasyon sa ating bansa. Hindi ito sangayon sa layuni ng edukasyon na itaguyod ang makabayan na paghuhubog ng kaisipan at kamalayan ng kabataan at sambayan ng Pilipino. Hindi pa man nasasakatuparan ang hangari ng saligang batas na siguraduhin at paunlari ng paghuhubog ng nasyonalismo at patriotismo sa edukasyon gayon din ang pampublikong utilidad na mahalaga para sa industrialisasyon at tunay na reforma sa lupa Tatanggalin pa ng RBH No. 7 ang mga restriksyon na proteksyon para sa pagpapayaman ng sariling atin. Bukod ba dito, naniniwala tayong wala sa ayos, wala sa tama ang isinasagawang proseso ngayon ng pagbabago ng konstitusyon na malinaw na hindi naman nakasaad sa ating saligang batas. Nananatili rin tayong mapagbantay sa anumang hidden agenda kaugnay ng RBH 7 at iba pa ang klase ng tsa-tsa. At tututulan natin ang anumang tangka sa pagtatanggal sa pagbabago 
bawal sa base militar, armas nuklear at patakarang gera pabor sa Estados Unidos at iba pang mga dambuhalang ekonomiya. Dagdag pa dito, tututulan rin natin ang posibleng pag-alis sa umiiral na term limit para magpalawig pa sa poder ng Administrasyong Marcos, mga dinastiyang politikal at iba pang mga kasapakat nito. Isulong ang agenda ng kababaihan at sambayanan, tutulan ang tsa-tsa ng iilan, lupa, sahod, kabuhayan, serbisyo, karapatan, hustisya at soberanya. Ito ang mga panawaga ng mga kababaihan para sa pagbabago. Pagbabagong panlipunan, hindi pagbabago ng charter. For all these reasons, Gabriela Women's Party votes no to RBH number 7. Maraming salamat, uh, Honorable Rosas. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Castro for her explanation. Honorable Castro, you may have. Maraming salamat, you have the floor. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. Please proceed. Para lang uh, ang boto po ng kinatawang ito sa RBH number seven, I know. Para lang mabigyan daan ng pagbubukas ng usapin ng chacha ng administrasyong Marcos Jr. Maraming kinansel ang Kongreso na committee meetings at labis na pinaikli ang plenary session sa loob ng dalawang linggo, February 26 hanggang March 6. Imbis na talakayin natin ang mga panukalang tunay na sasagot sa problema ng ating mga manggagawa, magsasaka, mangingisda, guro, kabataan, OFWs, mga biktima ng paglabag ng karapatang pantao at iba pa, ang chacha para sa 100% phoner ownership sa pamamagitan ng paglalagay ng unless otherwise provided by law ang ating inaatupag. Tila ba minamaliit nating lubos ang kakayanan ng mga Pilipino? Talamak ang colonial mentality kung saan mistulang tinuturing na tagapagligtas ang banyaga at ang foreign direct investments. Parang ibinabalik tayo sa panahon ng kolonyalismo ng Espanya, Amerika at Hapon kung saan turing sa atin ay walang kakayahan at second class citizen sa ating lupang sinilangan. Tinulugan ng kasalukuyan at ng mga nakalipas na administrasyon ang pambasang industrialization. Tapos ngayon, ina-expect natin na ang mga dayuhan ang magbibigay sa atin nito. Mayaman ang Pilipinas pero naghihirap ang sambayan ng Pilipino. Iniluluwas ang ating murang lakas na yaman sa, iba pang, sa ibang bansa habang iniimport natin ang mga mahal na mga produkto ng ibang bansa. Bakit nga ba nang ibang bansa ang ating mga OFW? Dahil mas mataas ang sahod sa ibang bansa. Sa Pilipinas, race to the bottom ang sahod ng mga manggagawa. Ang sahod ng mga guro, NARS, natin dito ay hindi hamak na mas mababa kumpara sa ating sa ibang bansa. Ano ba ang solusyon? Itaas ang minimum na sahod sa nakabubuhay na sahod. At ano ba yung balakid? Ayos ang sagot, ayon ng pribado at mga dayuhang kumpanya dahil liliit ang kanilang kita, ayon ng mga ekonomista ng gobyerno dahil aalis din umano ang foreign corporations and companies at foreign investors dito sa Pilipinas. Ang gusto lamang ng mga manggaga ang gusto lamang nilang manggagawa ay disente at nakabubuhay na sahod, ngunit pinagkakait sa kanila ngayon ng tubo. Ito ang sagot nila laban sa mga panukala. Tapos ngayon, sasabihin ng mga pro-chacha na anti-wage hike naman, ang 100% ownership, ang lahat ng mga uh, maitaas ang sahod. Hindi kompetisyon ang magpapataas ng sahod ng mga manggagawa. Hindi ang awa ng mga kapitalista o ng kompetisyon sa pamamagitan ng pagpapasok ng mga marami pang dayuhang kumpanyang korporasyon ang dahilan ng mga wage increase. Dekadigatang aktual na karanasan ng mga Pilipino, manggagawa, at hindi tataas ang sahod kung hindi sasama sa ipinaglalaban. Public utilities, hindi makakapayag ang kinatawa ng act teachers na sa hinaharap ay pagmamayari na ng mga dayuhan ng lahat ng mga public utilities sa bansa. Kuryente, tubig, komunikasyon at iba pa, iinom lang ng tubig ang mga Pilipino ay kailangan niya magbayad ng water bill sa mga dayuhan. Magbubukas lang ng ventilador ay magbabayad ng electric bill sa mga dayuhan. Anong klaseng pambansang pulisiya ito? Public utilities are imbued with public interest. Pero public interest pa rin ba ang mamamayani kung ito ay 100% pagmamayari ng mga dayuhan? Kung privatized pa nga lang ay tubo at kita na ang namamayani imbis na serbisyo, paano na kaya kung dayuhang pagmamayari na ito? Foreign companies come and go. Kapag pinagpakitaan na nila ang Pilipino, aalis na sa Pilipinas. Okay, sa edukasyon, ang Pilipinas 
at ang Pilipino pa rin ba ang puso ng konstitusyon? Kung ahayaan na ang edukasyon ay mak mako makokontrol ng mga dayuhan at ang mga paaralan ay pagmamayari ng mga dayuhan, ni hindi nga makapasok sa paaralan ang mga kabataan dahil sa hirap ng buhay at kailangan nilang tumulong sa paghahanap buhay. Sa ibang mga lugar ay kailangan pang tumawid sa ilog ang mga estudyante at guro para lamang makarating sa paaralan. Uso pa rin ang textbook sharing at paghahati ng iisang classroom para sa dalawang klase. Kahit ang ating gobyerno ay hindi priority ang pagpapagawa ng mga bagong pampublikong pa paaralan. Pinapangarap ng mga pro cha, cha ay pumasok ang Harvard at iba pang mga well-funded foreign schools. Pero nakakalimutan yata nila na hindi naman mura ang tuition fee and other school fees na mga, na mga iyan. Malinaw na para lamang sa mayaman at hindi ang mga mahirap ang walang akses sa edukasyon ang makikinabang dito. Marami mga Pilipino ang nagtatanong kung bakit pilit na pinag-uusapan ng cha-cha ng mga binoto nilang mga politiko para magrepresenta sa kanila. Kung hindi naman nila interes ang pagbabago nito. Sa katunayan, sinasabi ng Pulse Asia, SWS, na karamihan sa mga Pilipino ay tutol pa nga sa cha-cha. Bakit pilit na itinutulak ang cha-cha ng Marcos Jr. Administration? Unconstitutional ang ginagawa ng Kongreso ngayon sa proseso ng pag-aamienda ng konstitusyon. Walang fourth mode ang pagbabago ng konstitusyon. Marami lam maari lamang itong gawin sa pamamagitan ng Constitutional Assembly, convention, Constitutional Convention, People's Initiative, at wala nang iba. Hindi rin sinasagot ng mga nagpapanukala ng RB87 kung ano ang mangyayari kung magkaiba ang version ng RB87 ng House at ng Senado, lalo pa ngayon lamang na magkaiba ang nakasulat sa provision tungkol sa pagboto ng Kongreso. Magkakaroon ba ng bicameral conference committee? Kung oo, nangangamba ang kinatawa ng act teachers na mayroong isingit na iba pang mga amyenda sa konstitusyon na hindi na pag-usapan dito sa House o sa Senado. Nakabatay sa karanasan ang pangambang ito, kagaya ng mga GAA, uh, Fiscal Year 2024. Dagdag pa rito, napakadelikado ang pagbubukas ng chacha at sa tingin ng makabayan, parang itong test case at pages set ng President President, ang RB87, sa punto na maipasa ang House, ng House of Representatives at ang Senado. Hindi malayo na magpasa din ang iba pang mga RB8 sa hinaharap. Kung ganito lang pala kadali ang magpasa ng amyenda sa Konstitusyon, maaari itong maabuso para maipasok yung 100% foreign ownership ng lupa, term extension, no election, pagtanggal sa prohibition, sa political dynasty. So, I'm wrapping up, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. Ilang daang taong nagdusa ang mga Pilipino sa ilalim ng kolonyalismo na Espanyol, Amerikano at Hapon. Ilang daang taong pinatay, inabuso at inalipin ang ating mga ninuno ang mga dayuhang mananakop. Milyong-milyong mga Pilipino ang namatay at pinatay para lamang makamit ng inang bayan ang pinakamimithi nating kalayaan. Kung ang mga bayani ay nakikinig sa panukalang chacha at sa mga prinsipyo at dahilan sa likod ng inihapag na pagbabago rito, ano kaya ang kanilang isisigaw? Sabi ni General Luna, negosyo o kalayaan, bayan o sarili, pumili ka. Kau, anong isisigaw mo? So ito po ang dahilan, um, Mr. Speaker, kung bakit tayo ay bumoboto ng no sa RB87. Maraming salamat, Ginong Speaker. Maraming maraming salamat, uh, Honorable Castro. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Edsel Lagman. Gentlemen from Albay, um, Honorable Lagman, we recognize her. Please proceed. Mr. Speaker, due to time constraints, I will submit in writing the full explanation of my negative vote. Resolution of both houses number seven is flawed, both in procedure as well as in substance. Procedurally, because it does not follow any of the only three modes of amending or revising the Constitution. Substantially, because it forfeits to foreign dominance, Philippine posterity is in violation of the constitutional policy of the country developing a self 
reliant and independent e economy effectively controlled by Filipinos. Momentarily, Mr. Speaker, the approval today by the House of Representatives on third reading of the economic cha-cha may be akin to Palm Sunday with surfeit of alleluias. But in the Senate, it may be more like Good Friday. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat, Honorable Lagman. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Arnon Panaligan. I, I withdraw my motion, Mr. Speaker. I move that we recognize the Honorable Raul Manuel. Honorable Manuel, you have three, three minutes. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Seven reasons against RBH7, but hopefully not seven minutes. Number one, mali ang premise nito. We have to admit that protectionist measures, including deglobalization and regionalization, are on the rise. At the forefront is the U.S. itself. Imagine in a world that is supposed to be connected by technology, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to ban TikTok to protect its own big tech companies and is forcing uh, TikTok USA to find a local buyer. Silang mga makapangyarihang bansa na nagpapatupad ng protectionist policies ngayon ay sila rin nagtutulak sa mga naghihikahos na bansa, gaya ng Pilipinas, para lalo magbukas sa kanila. Ang unfair naman. Number two, pangakong madaling mapako ang dala ng dayuhang kapital. Nasa interes ng big foreign corporations na huwag magdala sa atin ng makabuluhang tulong para hindi tayo makabuo ng mauunlad na pambansang industriya at manatili tayo nakasandal sa kanila. We start by being beggars for FDI. We'll end up begging for more. Number three, strong domestic foundations muna. Before China and Russia pursued the wrong expansionist path and became strategic competitors of the U.S., umabante sila dahil ginamit nila ang kaban ng bayan para mamuhunan sa mga sosing industriya. Pinatupad ang tunay na reforma agrario, kaya nakalikha sila ng mga dekalidad na trabaho para sa mamamayan nila. Number four, walang unity para sa economic cha-cha, not even among Filipino economists. Meanwhile, in the education sector, school heads, teachers, and students are in harmony, united in saying that economic cha-cha is not the answer. Number five, we can't be resourceful for the wrong reasons. Inaprubahan dati ang cha-cha via Concon. Sinoportahan ang Di Umanoy People's Initiative at ngayon naman tinatahak ang fourth mode para amyendahan ang konstitusyon. Parang forum shopping po ang nangyayari. Number six, hindi galing sa taong bayan ang panukalang cha-cha. By endorsing cha-cha, the sitting president is going against one of his sworn duties in his oath as per Article 7, Section 5 of the Constitution, that is, to preserve and defend the Constitution. Number seven, iba ang pangunahing problema ng taong bayan. Sa so survey ng WR numero, 44% ang nagsabi na walang pinagbago ang antas ng kahirapan sa bansa under Marcos Jr. or under Duterte. 47% naman na nagsabi, lumala pa nga under the current admin. At sabi ng 59%, lumala din ang presyo ng bilihin in the current admin. Napatunayan po, Mr. Speaker, walang anumang batas na pumapabor sa malaking negosyo o dayuhan ang matagumpay na nagpababa ng presyo ng kuryente, tubig, petrolyo, pamasahe, at iba pa. Nagiging daluyan lang ang ganong mga batas para tumaas ang presyo kahit palpak ang serbisyo. For those seven reasons, we vote no to RBH7. Para sa inang bayan, no to economic charter change. At sa lahat ng mga ina, Happy Women's Month. Maraming salamat, Honorable Manuel. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Panaligan for his explanation. Uh, please proceed, sir. Mr. Speaker, I vote yes to resolution of both houses. Number seven, and by way of explanation, state the following. Mr. Speaker, I am in favor of removing the restrictive economic provisions in the present Constitution. At the outset, let me state that I am not a big fan of neoliberal economics that advocate liberalization, deregulation, and privatization, among others. I believe that the state should play a role in the economy to foster growth with equity. 
I believe in a measure of protection for our industries to enable them to compete. I believe that we must pursue national industrialization so that we can be self-reliant in producing the basic needs of our people and the strategic requirements of our country. But I also believe that economic ideologies or economic models should not be enshrined in a written constitution. The future generations of Filipinos should be given the freedom to decide on what path to economic development they want to pursue in accordance with the prevailing circumstances of their times. As Professor Archibald Cox wrote, the genius in constitution writing lies in the ability of its framers to say enough, but not too much. Just enough to give those who would come after them a point of reference, but not so much as to inhibit their successors who would live in change and changing worlds. Mr. Speaker, I submit that the time is now right to revisit the present Constitution. As a creation of human minds, it is not a perfect document. It is not a product of divine inspiration like the sacred scriptures that we mortals cannot alter. After 37 years, we can now examine and correct the deficiencies in the structure, the institutions, and organs of the state established in the Constitution that contribute to the persistent ills in our society. In closing, Mr. Speaker, let us now stand on the threshold of history. Let us not hesitate to initiate a review of the present Constitution to make it responsive and attuned to the dynamic changes that the framers did not foresee and could not have foreseen. In the words of Dean Roscoe Pound, the law must be stable, but it cannot stand still. Justice Benjamin Cardozo hinted on the need for the Constitution to evolve and adapt to change. In these words, and I quote, the inn that shelters for the night is not the journey's end. The Constitution, like the traveler, must be ready for the morrow. I therefore vote yes to RBH number seven. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat, uh, Congressman Panaligan. Majority Leader, before we proceed, allow me to read this correction of our voting result. I was informed by the Secretariat of the correction in the result of the nominal voting on resolution on both houses, number seven, that the body earlier approved on third reading. The correct result should be as follows. Affirmative votes, 288 instead of 289. Negative votes, 8 instead of 7. And abstentions remain at 2. If you, therefore, let the records reflect that he said results. Majority.